Welcome to the show. My guest in studio tonight, the star of South Africa's newest reality series, and later a rapper who's making a name for himself on local small screens. But before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at her journey so far. Well, screen time with Nikki Greenwald. That's me. Um, we just started that show, and it's really a celebrity-based chat show where we chat to celebrities about their lives, what's going on with them, and just sort of discuss kind of the news of the day. Um, it's really just a way for celebrities to demystify um, what it means to be famous, particularly in a country like South Africa. What our intention is as a company is to develop a celebrity structure. So, you know, in places like in the US and the UK, when a celebrity wins idols or something, for example, they, they s then step on to a series of programs that in essence make them famous. And in this country, we're not really that organized that way. So. Celebrities are often very quick and flash in the pan. So what we want to do with our shows is find a way, it's a way of packaging celebrity and making it a commodity and making it something that people are interested in. At the same time, not in a tabloidy kind of trashy way, but in a quality way that has longevity and that can last for a long time. So that these can become personalities that people can look up to, can identify with and ultimately it builds a bigger industry for all of us. Hopefully it'll be a long-standing talk show, something that South Africa hasn't been able to do. Not necessarily Oprah or Nerlene or anything on those lines, more of an entertainment sort of, like Nikki was saying, we want it to be like you haven't made it in South Africa unless you've been on screen time. So to be the sort of jumping off block for most celebrities and something that can last for a long time and be, stay fresh. That's why we're trying new celebrities, not only world-renowned people that are really are famous, people that are starting out, get them on the show to speak about the industry. Right, right, just to get used to it, right? Um, yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, I imagine like now, like now there's like the, the air con is pretty, I mean, does that affect your yes. voice at all? Okay, yeah. boom, yeah. right. Does, does it bother you? Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Check out that. Um, we just wanted to do something simple and really we wanted it to be like kind of like how Larry King's set was in the old days, like really, really simple and when you see it, it's like a, a branding exercise. So whenever you see a celebrity with that backdrop, you go, oh, it's that show. It's, it's a way of kind of holding everything together. We want something really simple. The glitz and the glam. And then Nikki and I just went to something that was, was new and different, something that hadn't been seen before. So we, we like lights. We like to play on lights. So we thought we'd just start with that. And then Nikki built a little model that you could see the lights. And then just from building the model, we thought, you know, why don't we do that in a bigger scale? And it's, yeah, it's basically comprised of lights white and black because we took from our graphics as well we like the idea of light boxes and that sort of thing so we went with the idea of light <laughs> we wanted to get led lights because we thought we wanted to make it really slick and whatever anyway the led lights turned out to be 125 rand each which is when you count how many lights we have in our studio that's quite expensive so eventually Tanette actually went and found us some very nice christmas lights which is actually what our sets made out of <laughs> so we're probably the first show at etv to use um fairy lights um, in our set, but it works. And I think the main reason that it works is because of our equipment. We chose to spend more money on really, really high-tech equipment instead of wasting too much money on the set because it actually works better that way around. So we're trying to just make programs that are of a very high quality um, visually. And you don't always have to spend money to get that high quality look. Um, but you do have to spend time thinking about exactly what you want and getting the lighting right and that kind of thing. So that pretty much sums up our set. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Welcome, Sue. My guest in studio this week, the star of South Africa's first Oscar winning film, and later an SA rock icon who's about to release his 10th studio album. But before we meet guest number one, let's take a look back at his career highlights so far. Nice. Well, we, the guess, okay, I have to tell you this because this is Inside E and we can share the, all the secrets is that um, we've been try, we try and mix up, we juxtapose um, different types of guests, so old and young, black and white, classical and hip hop. We like to mix things up a lot with the show because so, we find that we get a lot of the, the guests then play off each other and it's more interesting for people to watch. Um, but I have to say, um, our director, and production manager, Tanek Krauss, has been struggling <laughs> 
because um, these celebrities just let us down all the time. So we have this whole plan and they just, so on the day, the last few episodes, we've just been struggling, phoning people last minute, trying to get this celebrity, that celebrity. So it looks all easy on camera, but there's a lot of stress behind the scenes to to get the celebrities in the building and actually shoot them, so yeah. It's not your scene, like honestly speaking, it's not my scene. Yes, I work on Club 808, but you will hardly find me at a club. The club really won't pay your bills, it just, it runs a bill for you that you have to pay. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, Danae Renaka was the most exciting. <laughs> her surname is not Renaka, it's something else, which I can't remember at the moment, but booking her flight was quite fun, because it's not Renaka. But she was very nice and she's very open. I think with her reality show, she's very open anyway. So she spoke really nicely. We teamed up with the Salsi guy, Abdi Hussein, who was really great. And the two of them together, the musician and the, the reality diva, worked really nicely together. And then we also got Catherine Jenkins, who's the Welsh songstress, which was really cool. It's our first sort of high profile celebrity who had the manager and the groupies and everybody outside. She was quite interesting to do, worked out really nicely. We teamed her up with Toomey. And we also had the boys from Lockenville. We know them quite well because we did their close-up last season, so we got to re-interview them again with like some of the secrets that we learned from them the last time, which is quite interesting. Totti, Totti, Totti. So probably I'll never get rid of the name, I guess, or the character. Is that annoying as an actor, or, or do you take it as a compliment? I think for me, I take it as a compliment because, I mean, it really means that people really appreciate my work and they still remember characters that I play. Um, like this, at a, at a snap of a finger, and that they can still recognize me as the character. We needed a lot of patience also because you're shooting in tunnels and there's not really much space. So even the kind of equipment that we're using was um, quite small but big in quality. Um. My team, okay. Well, basically, I do very little. And um, my team is Tanette Krauss, who is our production manager. She's our director. She's our producer, and she is my sounding board and um, Tanette basically does absolutely everything on this show <laughs> and she's been with me for four years, three, four, four years um, and she is honestly a lifesaver and I would be nothing without her is the truth. Um, and then we have our new camera person slash editor, Sean Blomkamp, who's working hard as we speak. Um, and he is a breath of fresh air and works really hard and unfortunately sometimes works way too late for us so we have to drag him out of the edit suite at three in the morning. Um, but he's doing a really, really great job, especially with the intros for our celebrities, which he's put a lot of work into. And then we've got Mr. Gary Hartley, who is helping us with our online content, um, helping with our Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff, because I suck at that. Um, and he writes a few of the intros and that kind of thing as well. So really, it's just the four of us. Um, we do have a couple of other people we use um, for final mix and that kind of thing, and freelance camera people on that, but really the core team is just, just the four of us. So when I started, I started as an intern and I helped Nikki work on the showbiz report, and we worked on that for at least two years before Nikki decided to do a new show. We did the style report, which was a whole new ball game, which was really cool. We, I started working on that, and then when Nikki fell pregnant last, no, then we did the tech report, which was even more new and exciting. and. I learned a lot about technology and style that I didn't know before. And then when Nikki fell pregnant, we decided to do a show called The Close Up, which was really cool, which is doing interviews and finding celebrities to do these interviews on, which seems easy and glamorous and stuff, but as Nikki was saying earlier, it's not really. It's quite hard to get them to come and, and bear their soul, but it was really exciting to work on that and finding pictures of them and baby pictures and doing some investigative journalism and phoning their schools and getting pictures of them at school that they didn't even know we had. And now we're working on screen time, which is really exciting. Yeah, I think that Showbiz, it, it could come back. I think, um, you see, Showbiz Report was based on using Reuters material, which, as you know, we get on the E! News channel, um, and, and making the most out of that material that is given to us um, and making it relevant to a South African audience. People do like to watch the latest movies and the red carpet and latest music videos and that kind of thing, but it's just packaging it in a way that's entertaining to our audience. So I don't think that format isn't gone. But it's definitely we're moving on to bigger and better things, and we'll we'll bring that format back, maybe in a few years' time, as sort of a bite-sized entertainment segment. And we're not sure yet if it's going to be on ETV or the E News Channel. Nikki and I want to take over the world in terms of entertainment, and we plan on taking over the world slowly but surely. No, we just hope to be keeping making fresh TV content keep going with the close-up. We're getting such a great response from Twitter followers because we've never really been on an online contingency and now we started with Twitter and just watching the people 
you get inspired by our shows every Saturday night. It's quite exciting and interesting. So we hope to just continue to do that. Yes, but this is our trade secret, right? This is only for Inside E. No one else is going to know this. Yes, we record on a Wednesday in our lovely new studio, thanks Denby Sir, um, downstairs, um, which has been challenging and fun, um, <laughs> to say the least. Um, we record on a Wednesday, and then um, we edit the previous week's show on a Thursday, and somehow it gets out on Saturday. Thanks, schedulers, for that, and everyone else at ETV that puts up with our, our late delivery of programs. But um, yeah, we try and keep it as fresh as we can. We want to keep the guests topical. We want to keep, keep it newsy, so whoever people are talking about. But we, at the moment, we kind of two shows ahead of ourselves. But as I say, sometimes celebrities just don't pitch up, and it's a disaster, and blah. So we have we have to kind of think on our feet a lot of the time.